ahead and get started. We're going to talk about microscopes and telescopes today. So we're going to use what we've learned so far about uh, lenses and mirrors to talk about how we can use those things to do science and see things that we normally wouldn't be able to see. So obviously with microscopes, we're going to use this to magnify small things. And then with telescopes, we're going to use these to uh, see distant things. And then with, especially with telescopes, we can see faint things. And that's because we can, uh, I guess maybe I'll talk about that later. But so we're gonna see how we can use lenses to magnify small things that are close by and then also see, make, make it so that we can see things that are very far away. And so there will be some new vocab that we need to learn. Um, and so we'll talk about a simple compound microscope in this class, but just know that there are other more complicated types of microscopes that exist. So we're just going to do kind of a simple, a simple one. And so there's going to be two lenses that make up the compound microscope. That's why it's compound, because it has two. Oops. So they are the objective. And this is the one that's closest to the specimen or whatever you're looking at through your microscope. And then you also have the eyepiece, which of course is the lens that you look through. And so now I'll draw a picture of what is going on with a microscope. And so we'll, we'll kind of take that step by step. So we're going to have some small object here. Maybe I'll do it in a different time. So this is still for the compound microscope. And then we're going to have our first lens, which is the objective lens. because it's closest to the object. And then the distance from 
the object to the objective lens is DO. Maybe I'll offset the object a bit in the center. And so this dashed line that I'm drawing is just going through the center of each lens. And so this object has some height, which we'll call H O. So now if you look at the light rays that come from this object and interact with this objective mirror, they might be coming in like this. And then on the other side, they're going to get focused to some point over here. So because this is coming from the first interaction of the light with the first lens, this is called the first object. And the distance from the first, from the lens to the first object is, or from the lens to the, Sorry, this should be first image. And then the distance from the lens to the first image is DI. And you can either uh, do that as like a DI comma one, because it's the first image. And then again, this image now will have some distance from this dashed line to where the image is. So we'll call that the height of the image. Then we have another lens over here, which is the eyepiece. And if we look at the light rays coming from this first image into the eyepiece, then they won't be focused on this side of the lens. So instead we need to do our ray tracing, so I'll do that in red. And what you would get is that these things all 
combine at this location here. So this would be your, you could call it the second image or the final image. And it has a much bigger height. So I'll call this HI2. And it's going to be some distance BI2 away from the eyepiece. So it's kind of hard to see from this drawing, but the objective lens is going to magnify the image a bit. And then the eyepiece is going to magnify the image a bit more, and it's going to put it at a distance that your eye is capable of seeing the object. So the, the way that your eye works, there's a limit to how close you can focus on something. And that limit is about 25 centimeters. So what the microscope is doing, in addition to magnifying the very small thing for you to see it, it's also placing that object farther than 25 centimeters, the image, it's placing the image 25 centimeters or more away from your eye so that you can actually focus on it. And so this DI2, We want this to be more than 25 centimeters. And that's just because that's how your eye works. And then if your microscope is working well, then obviously your uh, this image is going to be much bigger than the original size of the object. If not, then I will write down in words what's going on on this picture on the next slide. Okay, so we've got a, so we're still doing compound microscope. And so the first thing that's happening is light from the object So I guess maybe first I should describe the orientation so the object is further away from the objective lens. than the focal length. Or in mathematical language that would be D zero or D O is greater than F O. Object distance is greater than focal length of the objective lines. So because of that, so because D zero is bigger than F zero, the light from object K 
can be focused. Other side of the objective lens creating image, or I guess first image. And let's just say that light or the object, object is to the left of the objective mirror or objective lens. And so then when I say it create creating a first image on the right, I just mean on the, not on the same side as the object. And this first image is larger than object. So in math, the, the height of image one is greater than the height of the object. So now light from image one enters the eyepiece lens And now because the distance from image one to eyepiece, is greater than the eyepiece focal length. Or in math, because the distance from image one is less than the eyepiece focal length, the light is not focused on the right hand side of the eyepiece lens. So using ray tracing, we get a second image. larger and
farther away than the initial image or the initial object. Or again in math, the height of the second image, image two, is greater than the height of the first image, which was greater than the height of the object. So we've used these two different lenses to magnify the object twice and uh, put it farther away from our eye so that we can focus on it. Uh, so the distance from image two, we want this to be greater than or equal to 25 centimeters. And I guess this is, so this is the distance from the eyepiece, which you can say is about the distance to your eye. Yes. Oh, uh, this should say one. Then lens equations that we've been writing down still apply. So the focal length is one over D object plus one over D image. And then the magnification is D image over D object or uh, D or H image over H object. Uh, but now that we have two lenses, uh, you it would be wise to do it in two different steps. Uh, so what I mean by that is if we look back at our image or uh, this drawing that I did, the first step would be to <clears throat> use the object and the object's height and all that stuff to figure out where the first image is. But then when you wanna see the interaction with the second eyepiece or the second lens, you then treat the first image as the object and then repeat the steps again. Uh, but sometimes you wanna just know what the total magnification of the object is going to be. And so you can do that by just multiplying the magnification from the objective lens and the magnification of the eyepiece. Okay, so there's another term uh, that we need for talking about microscopes, and that's called the numerical aperture. That's, we just write that as NA, and this is basically the light gathering ability of the objective lens, or I guess just in this case, it would be of the objective lens, but more generally just the light gathering ability of a lens. And 
And so I'm going to write down a couple of equations. And then I'll explain what they are in a picture. So this is the numerical aperture. Little n is still the index of refraction. And then uh, this theta and alpha are, uh, that's what I'll show in this picture. So if this is the object down here, and this is your, this is your lens, then only light that's within this angle would enter the lens. So this is the angle theta, and then alpha is just theta divided by two. So that's why those two equations are the same. Another measurement from this picture that you might use is the diameter of this light cone D. And so this Light cone diameter comes into another description that we use to describe lenses, and that's the F number, which we write as an F and then a slash and then a, a number sign. And that's equal to the focal length divided by that light cone diameter. And then for everything that we're going to do in this class, this equation is approximately the same as one over two times the numerical aperture. So you might be given the F number of a lens, or you might be given the numerical aperture of the lens, and then you should be able to convert between the two uh, and maybe use them to find the focal length or find the index of refraction. I'm now going to show you an example of this 
two-step method that I mentioned when dealing with microscopes. Uh, so let's say you have an amoeba that you want to look at through a microscope. And this amoeba is going to be 0 0.35 centimeters away, or 0 0.305 centimeters away from the objective lens. And the focal length of this objective lens is 0 0.3 centimeters. So the object is a little bit further away than the focal length, which means that the light coming into the objective lens from this object will be able to be focused on the backside of the lens. So that would be the first part is figuring out where the first image, so I'll call this image one, figure out where that's going to be projected. Then we can ask what the magnification of image one is going to be with respect to image for uh, with respect to the object. <coughs> uh, so this distance is the object distance. And this image one is a distance D image one away from the objective lens. So if we want to know the magnification, magnification equals negative D image over D object. So we don't know what the image distance is. But we have another equation that relates focal length to object distance and image distance. So let's solve equation number two for the image distance. So that would be one over F zero minus one or F O minus one over D O equals one over D I. And then if we solve for the image distance, then we just do the reciprocal of everything. So now we have the image distance isolated and we can plug it back into our magnification equation. And when we do that, we get something that looks like this. And then solving for the magnification, now we can plug in our values, one over the focal length of the objective lens, 0 0.3, object distance is 0 0.305, and the object distance is 0 0.305. So when you plug all that into your calculator, you get
a magnification of negative 60. And so what this negative sign is telling you is that the image is going to be upside down compared to the object. So negative magnification. tells you that image is upside down compared to object. So that's how we would get the magnification of image one, but microscopes have two lenses. So now what do we do when there's a, an eyepiece lens over here? So let's see what that looks like. So we started off with our amoeba over here. The light went through the objective lens and made an image on this side. And now the light from that image is going to pass through the eyepiece lens. So if you knew your microscope well, then you might know this distance between the objective and the eyepiece. Let's say that's 20 centimeters. And then the focal length of the eyepiece lens Fe is two centimeters. So if we wanna know the distance from the image to the eyepiece lens, we first need to figure out what the image distance is. So if we look back at our uh, magnification equation, we now know the magnification and we know the object distance. So we can use that to find the image distance. So that's the first step. Uh, what we're working towards is to figure out what the magnification of the eyepiece lens is. And what we've already found is the magnification of the objective lens. So using that magnification that we found, we can now calculate the distance to image one and so solving for this image distance, and I'm going to move the negative to the other side. Okay, so now we can plug in our numbers that we found. The magnification was 60 from the objective lens. The object was 0 0.305 centimeters away from the objective lens. 
So the magnification was negative. So those two negative signs are going to cancel out. And we find that the image to object one is 60 times 0 0.305, which is 18.3 centimeters. Because the 0 0.305 was given in centimeters. Okay, so now we have this distance is 18.3. So then this blue distance is 20 minus 18.3, which gives us 1.7 centimeters. So now if we compare these two distances, you'll see that the distance from image one to eyepiece is less than the focal length of the eyepiece. And so what this means is that the image formed by the eyepiece is on the same, or I'll just say it's, so the way that I have it drawn, it's going to be on the left side of the eyepiece. And so remember that was because the, uh, the rays coming from the image are not going to converge on the right-hand side of the eyepiece. And so you have to do your ray tracing to see that there's an image over here that we're going to call D2. D image two. So that's the distance to image two. And it's going to have some height associated to it that's going to be magnified. Okay. So now the trick to this is that when we use these kind of equations now, for step two, we replace the object distance, the image one distance. And so this will look like one over F E equals one over the 1.7 centimeters that we calculated here, because that's the distance from the image to the eyepiece lens. And then we can use that to find the image distance and then the magnification. So I'll do that on the next slide. So we're going to start from this equation on the next slide. One over the focal length of the eyepiece lens equals one over the image distance of the first image to the eyepiece lens, which we calculated was 1.7 and then one over the image two distance, which is what we're gonna calculate now. So the eyepiece lens had a focal length of two centimeters. 
we'll subtract the one over 1.7 to the other side. That gives you one over negative 0 0.08. Oops, eight two. And then we want the reciprocal of that. So we just do one over that answer. And we get 11.33 centimeters. So now that we have the distance to image two, we can use this magnification equation. Where remember the object in step two is actually the image from step one. So this is negative 11. 0.33 divided by 1.7. So those negative signs will cancel. And so when you plug this in, you get a magnification of 6.66. And so this is just the magnification of the eyepiece. And now if you want the magnification for the whole thing, you take the magnification of the objective lens and you multiply it by the magnification of the eyepiece. So that's 60 times 6.66, and that gives you about 400 total magnification. And so this is the process for how to solve these, uh, work with these multi-lens systems. So first it's useful to draw your pictures, then you can do the work for the first image, figure out where it lands and what its magnification is. Then when you deal with the second lens, you pretend that the image that you that the first lens created is now your object, figure out what the distance from the object is, or from the, that first image is to the lens, the second lens, that will be your object distance that you'll replace in this equation. And then once you have that distance, uh, then you'll repeat the process again using the same equations and just plugging in the appropriate values. <laughs> 